In a sports-obsessed state like Montana, nothing beats the Grizz Cat Football Clash. The annual game of the year typically splits family, friends, and fellow Treasure State citizens, but in a town like Missoula, things may be a little biased. We simply wanted to know from the locals what they thought of the Grizz Cat rivalry. Much like turkey during November or fireworks in July, fantasy football drafts in late August are quickly becoming a staple in American culture. However, not everyone's a fan. How does your wife feel about it? Yeah, she's not loving it. <laughs> so go out there, get creative with your team names, maybe make a new rival or two, and who knows, you may end up winning some money. In Missoula, Dan Semino, MTN News. <sighs> Nothing quite like a quaint, quiet day at the lake, right? But things at Sealy are about to get extreme as we show you the sport of hydrofoiling, as this is one of the world's best, Ben Fernie taking his skills to the sky. The concept is simple. It's water skiing sitting down while implementing wake technology to bring in the defying physics element of human flight. You know, the wings just fly, and then when you lean back, they go up. And so it's this idea of, of loading that line and getting those wings to go up. A lot of it is like an airplane wing in terms of hydrodynamics. This Memorial Day weekend, Ben Fernie set the record for airtime in the sport. They measure by frames on a camera as Ben, like Roger Maris, became the first to reach 61. On this ride right here, had he landed this, we may have recorded a new world record. I don't know, I haven't frame counted it yet, but it, I, I'm guessing it was bigger than 61. In their fifth year, the founder of the Sealy Invitational, Keith Giles, says having Ben ride the lake is truly a special treat for his event. Most people are not going to get the opportunity to ride with Ben Fernie or somebody like that. It'd be like going golfing with Tiger Woods, only we're foiling. So we get an opportunity to ride with somebody that's one of the top riders in the country. The big air is where it's all at. I mean, just making it look easy and going really big, I think, is the best. And so when you're up there 15, 20 feet floating down, it's awesome. So that's hydrofoiling. It's as easy as sitting in a chair, sort of. In Sealy Lake, Dan Semino, MTN Sports. That's right, hello everybody, time for sports, where for the second straight week, the Montana Grizzlies have had to face a former head coach. Last Saturday, it was Joe Glenn in South Dakota. Today, the Grizz welcome back Robin Flugrad to Missoula. Montana hosting Weber State, where Flugrad serves as the team's offensive coordinator. Grizz looking to hand the Wildcats their 10th straight loss when in the first, Flugrad's offense gets stifled by the Grizz defense. Here's John Canangana with the interception. He also had a sack and forced fumble earlier in the game. The hair was everywhere from that pick. Comes this on fourth and goal. Jordan Johnson rolls out and finds Cam Warren, who just barely gets to the pylon for the Montana touchdown. Grizz up 14 to three at the half. Second half, no more Jordan Johnson with a head injury. In comes Shea Smithwick hand, but it really doesn't matter who hands the ball off to Jordan Canada as the junior finds a hole on third down and he is beyond the secondary. Canada takes this 80 yards for the score. He finished with two touchdowns and 189 yards rushing. On to the fourth now, more defense, all Zach Wagaman getting the sack and the strip. Kendrick Van Ackerman is there for the recovery as Weaver tallied all of four yards in the second half. Off the turnover, it's senior day and a really cool moment here when fifth year walk-on Marlon Miles scores the final touchdown of the day as the Grizz cruise 42 to six onto the high school gridiron where Loyola has simply survived and advanced to this point with an overtime win followed by a one point victory making these playoffs much more stressful than last year's championship run. Would today's semifinal at home against Boulder provide the same amount of drama? Not the case here in the fourth with the Rams up by 20. Better make that 27. Tony Madsen rumbles into the end zone as the running game took over in the second half. And just when you think you know what's coming, Loyola fakes the run and the quick pass from Matt McHugh finds Patrick Cosena in stride as he takes it to the house. Loyola heading back to the championship 41 to seven. Your final up next will be the title game in Baker. Moving along to state volleyball where the Lady Blue Devils down the Bitterroot had quite the season and quite the tournament. In the first match, Corvallis trailed by two sets before rallying on Thursday and today entered a win away from a state championship. Over to Bozeman we go in a battle for the Class A crown against Lewistown. The Lady Eagles took the first set, but after that it was all Corvallis. First up, Joanna Avery right down Broadway with the kill. Then here's Alex Price with the block that eventually falls as we fast forward to championship point when we see Kelsey Irwin knocking it down at the net as Corvallis captures its first ever state volleyball title. Several people were left with nothing after the fire gutted part of the Vanta Villa on East Broadway owned by the Missoula Housing Authority. Dan Semino has the story.
It was quite the scene at the Vantage Villa apartment complex when a structure fire broke out, causing both the city and rural fire departments to respond. We did call a general alarm on this fire, which basically means I did an all call for, for all of our firefighters. Well, it's everybody's worst nightmare to, to have a fire in an occupied building. It appears the fire started on the second level and spread to the third level and then into the attic space where it really made a run. With a fire of this magnitude in an occupied facility, some of the personal loss residents are now forced to endure is immeasurable, not to mention completely life-changing. Well, I lost everything, 100%. Mine was the worst apartment. Everything I have is what I have on right now. Well, I had pictures of 50 years that I'm never going to get back. I think they're understandably very upset. Um, this, these are their homes. I don't have nothing, no clothes, no money or nothing, and they're going to try to, Red Cross is going to try to assist with a bunch of us. We're, we live in a low-income apartments, so everybody's on a fixed income. And while the damage is hard to imagine and still in the process of being added up, the silver lining from the devastation comes in the form of those brave rescue workers who reduced and managed what could have been a true catastrophe. The emergency responders have done a fantastic job. The fire department was here as quickly as they could get here. They did a good job. Those firemen, they did a wonderful job. A little bit flying by the seat of your pants when, when it gets to that point, but uh, uh, it, it worked out good. The guys made a good stop. So this is bad that it happened, but everybody's okay in the apartments, so that's a blessing. In Missoula, Dan Semino, MTN News. Meet Dave Norman. If you're a country music fan, you may recognize his voice from the radio on Eagle 93. Working on a Tuesday, 66 in Missoula, 64 in Hamilton, 100% chance of Brad Paisley. And when Dave isn't behind the mic, he likes to keep busy training for triathlons, achieving a personal Ironman status. However, it was just a year ago when Dave's life changed forever. The date was May 19th of 2012. Dave was participating in the peak triathlon when suddenly here at Blue Mountain, his heart started to give way, and the doctor said he only had a one in 10 chance of survival. Like if your car's got something in the, you know, in the fuel injection, and it's just like, Bleh. it was kind of like that. You know, the, you know, I got the throttle of all the way down. Like I can't push it any further, yet I'm lugging up this hill. What really brought it home was when, uh, was when the doctor was explaining what happened. Uh, there's an artery in the heart, they call it the Widowmaker. It's called the Widowmaker for a reason. It supplies the heart with about 65% of its, of its blood. And that was the one that was blocked. And I looked over at my daughter and uh, she was tearing up pretty bad. That's what brought it home. After a year, Dave still has difficulty believing his heart attack even occurred. It was a big awakening realizing, you know, that immortality has not been bestowed upon me. You know, I'm still wrestling with this, with this whole state of denial. Part of it is, is like waking up from a dream. It's like, did this really happen? You know, and like I got those tags that clatter together every once in a while to remind me that yes, in fact, it did. Remarkably, Dave says he's even faster now than before. And for the first time in 17 years, Dave will be going all 26.2 miles on foot in this year's Missoula Marathon. They say you can start training for your next marathon when you forget how much the first one hurt. So the, the joke goes, my stupid brother-in-law says, hey Dave, let's do the Missoula Marathon. And his equally stupid brother-in-law says, yeah, that's a great idea. Let's do that. All jokes aside, Dave and his heart are more than ready for Sunday's race. In Missoula, Dan Semino, MTN News. This story is one of modern entrepreneurship. A group of four Missoulians coined a phrase used to capture snowmobiling misadventures simply by inventing a word. And it turns out that term has endless potential. Our very own Dan Semino goes on special assignment to explain boonstucken. By design, the English language allows for creativity. The internet generates endless opportunity. So when you combine the two with a term such as boonstucken, you suddenly have something quite marketable. We started going out for our first time. A bunch of motorcycle guys gone snowmobiling, and well, we started getting stuck a lot. You know, it came from all of us being brand new riders, not really knowing what we're doing. We were thought we were all really cool. We thought we were boondocking, and then we realized all we're doing is getting stuck. So it's a combination of words. And just like that, the brand was born. In February 2013, the Boonstuck and Facebook page launched for friends and family to share their sledding mishaps. In less than a year, however, it suddenly has its own following. 
The beginning of this snowmobile season, all of a sudden it just took off. People were finding it. And we have we have Facebook fans all the way in Sweden and Norway and Russia. And so it just started taking off and pretty amazing. It was all fun and games for the fearless foursome until they realized others wanted their hands on the brand. And then they realized they better start taking things a little bit more seriously. We had uh, another uh, website um, talk to us about maybe purchasing it. And we realized at that point we had something pretty serious and we better take it a little bit more serious. And that's when we had to do our trademark and get a business license and everything else and then realized that we had something that was really cool and other people might want it. So what makes Boonstuckin so attractive to the masses? No matter what skill level you're at, you always get stuck. Everybody gets stuck. I try not to get stuck, but it seems to still happen, so. It's basically the joke that it happens to all of us, but none of us really like to talk about. You know, I have some older buddies that have sledded for a long time, and now they're bringing out their old pictures. They're like, yo, check this out from 20 years ago on my little short track sled. He's like, I'm way stuck. They don't, he didn't really bring that stuff out before. The evolution of Boonstuckin continues with its own website and apparel. Luckily for the quartet, one of them is currently studying business. I'm in college and going to school for business and marketing, so it seems like as I go through classes, and go through some of the schooling, it's about the same time that we run into things with Boonstuckin that we need. As Boonstuckin progresses, the journey has the promise of potential profit. But in the meantime, they're just enjoying the ride. For us, Boonstuckin's just, it's a lot of fun. It really gives you a sense of pride. It doesn't happen very often that you can coin a term that actually takes off. Yeah, it's a made up word and all of a sudden now it's real. I mean, <laughs> now it's trademarked, now it's ours. We own a word, that's pretty cool. I'd say it's a pretty good gig, making up a word, getting to hang out with three of your best friends, and making a little bit of money on the side. On special assignment, Dan Semino, MTN News. And on the shoot, we're told Mike Schroeder got stuck within the first five minutes, but he claims if you're not getting stuck, then you're not really trying. <laughs> That's right. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the ballpark. Another day with the Osprey. Today, we're introducing you to Jake Mayers. And Jake's got a cool story. Tell him about the time you proposed to your girlfriend at the ballpark. Well, um, it was my last uh, last home game at our uh, at our field, and um, I was actually starting that day. But before, I was trying to like strategically plan out of like having this ring with me, so I actually gave it to my trainer. So after the game, we were going to go out and take pictures because it was the last day of our home field. And um, right when we were taking pictures and stuff, she started to walk away, and then I'd hop down on one knee on top of the mound, and then she turned around, and freaked out. It was quite a shock, and believe me, she was she was actually kind of upset because she was not expecting this at all. But then in the end, she loved it. She forgot to say yes. She forgot to even answer the question. How nervous were you? I mean, I was more anxious than anything because I've been wanting to propose to her for a while, and um, doing it on the baseball field was definitely the perfect place because that's where we kind of live our life. I want to hear a little bit about the romance? How did you know? Was it love at first sight? Oh, there's no. No doubt. There's no doubt. Actually, I met her on campus our uh, freshman year. And when I saw her, I was just like, oh man, I need to get my hands on her. No. <laughs> but uh, just like the next day, we went and had breakfast and stuff. And I was just like, yeah, I definitely need to hang on to her. Well, that's going to do it with our day with an Osprey, Jake Mayers, Dan Semino, KPAC Sports.